Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Thought we'd do a video from this angle. These are the trees I cut down. Opened up the view a little bit on my deck. I get to see a row of uh, pine trees and the wind blow through them. And some of the trees here were so thick it was getting bad so I had to thin them out a little bit. But we are here. We're going to be doing the person word study. We're, on, we're going to do Isaiah and Jeremiah. So person word study. Turn to Isaiah 32, chapter 32, verse 4. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. For the vile person, there's the word again, will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity, to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord to make empty the soul of the hungry and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fall. Now real quick, I always try to reiterate in every study, the reason I decided to do a word study on person is because of the Godhead versus the Trinity. The Trinity says there's God and three persons. Or, yeah, And the Godhead says that there's only one person, Jesus Christ. A person, by definition, so far in everything we've seen in the Bible, has to have a body and a soul. To be called a person, you have to have a body and a soul, and you have to be living. It's always a reference to something that's living, someone that's living. When a person's dead, they're not called a person when they're dead. Okay. So, we read there, vile person, for the vile person, both five and six. Okay, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. It says in verse 6, and his heart will work iniquity. Work. Okay, you can have iniquity in your heart. Uh, I did a study once. Um, God opened my eyes to say, why is, can God hear the prayer of a lost person? Because they tried to take prayer out of salvation. And saying, well, God doesn't hear people that are, that are sinners, that aren't saved. Well, if... Um, King David in one of the Psalms said that if I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. What happens when you come to God in repentance and believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross? You're throwing those iniquities at the foot of the cross. They're no longer in your heart. Okay? So then when you pray and confess both in prayer and ask God to save you, He hears you because you're not holding that iniquity in your heart. So this heart will work iniquity. You can hold iniquity in your heart and the evidence of that is you're going to work it. It's physical. Okay, work iniquity. Practice hypocrisy. What's practicing hypocrisy? You're going around preaching hypocrisy. Body, soul, and spirit. If you have a body that's doing something other than just being buried and laying there dead, it has to have a spirit. So, vile morally based or impure, sinful, depraved by sin, wicked, hateful in the sight of God, and of a good man, good men. That's what vile means when you're saying vile person. It's talking about somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. Right. Jeremiah 43, that's twice it's mentioned in Isaiah. So we're done with Isaiah. Let's turn to Jeremiah 52, 25. Uh, Isaiah 32, uh, if you want to read it, um, 1, 2, and 3, it talks about a type of Jesus Christ. But that wasn't the important thing. I started doing it, and I started getting into it, started doing a study. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, this isn't the important part of the study. The important part of the study is to get through it just enough to say, hey, what is the definition of person in the Bible? Body, soul, and spirit. Okay, so Jeremiah 43, 6. Even men and women and children and the king's daughters and every person that Nebuzaradan, if I can say it right, the captain of the guard had left with Gildalia, Gildala, the son of Achim, the son of Shephan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Boric, the son of Nira. Okay. How do we know what person means? It says every person. One of the definitions of um, person is body, soul, and spirit. And the other half of it is it's a reference to um, men, women, and children. 
You say, but it already said that. Well, notice it says in the king's daughters. That's children. Then it says in every person. It's just basically saying in every person that Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, had left uh, with Gildea. Every person. It just gets to the point where it says every person he left with this person. Uh, Gildea. All right. So what's going on here is you have Nebuchadnezzar, this whole, as we're going through this stuff, is ransacking uh, Jerusalem. Okay. And it's talking about here that there's certain people that were left behind. And you read some of the other books, which I'm reading, um, talking about what happened. You know, the walls being rebuilt, uh, the temple being rebuilt, because from the people that were left behind and weren't taken into captivity. Okay. So we see person there is a reference to someone who has a body, soul, and spirit. A man has a body, soul, and spirit. A woman has a body, soul, and spirit. A child has a body, soul, and spirit, as long as they're alive. And they are in this passage. Jeremiah 52.25. Turn to Jeremiah 52.25. He took also out of the city an eunuch, which had the charge of the men of war, and seven men of them that were near the king's person, this is important, which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, who mustered the people of the land, and threescore men of the people of the land, that were found in the midst of the city. Okay, this is what was taken. Okay. King's person. When you see king's person, it's saying that there's men that belong to the king. They're his. Okay. So the seven men here is what person is referring to. People will try to say, no, king's person. If king was referring to, if person was referring to king, why does it say king's person? It shows ownership. The king owned these seven people. What happens in uh, verse um, 27? Jeremiah 52, 27. And the king of Babylon smote them and put them to death in Ribah in the land of Hama. Thus Judah was carried away captive out of his own land. Killed him. You can only kill something, someone who has a body, soul, and spirit. Okay? That's the reference to it. Uh, Hebrews 1.3. The reason I said it's very important when it says king's person, it's talking about the seven people who belong to the king. They're his. Okay. Hebrews 1.3, one of the big fights and arguments is this is talking about God the Father, and it's not. It's talking about Jesus Christ, who being the brightness of His glory and the expressed image of His person, Jesus is the image of the Godhead. Okay, He's God's image okay. of His person and upholding all things by the word of His power when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. It's Hebrews 1.3. Okay, his person is shown ownership. Okay, what's the ownership? Who's the express image? That's who they're talking about, person. Who's the express image of God? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one that's ever said that they're in the Bible. He's the only one called a person. And no matter how many times we ask these Trinity people, show me in the Bible where um, God the Father is called a person. Not that you think it justifies him being a person, that he's actually called a person. You won't find it. Same thing with the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit is called a person. That's supposed to be major doctrine. It's supposed to be very important. So God would say it. He did about Jesus Christ. Right? So right there we see person is a reference to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. So when you say God in three persons, you're saying that God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. Jesus has a body, soul, and spirit of his own, which is true. Or, and then the Holy Spirit has a body, spirit of his own. And then a lot of people we talk to say, we don't believe that. Why do you say God in three persons then? Well, 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 and it's like someone's, it's like they're mentally ill. They refuse and reject the true Godhead, the Jesus of Scripture. Okay? God the Father is the soul. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is the spirit. Jesus is the body. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? Jesus is called a person because he has a soul, a body, and a spirit. 
So, Jeremiah 52, 28. Okay. Last two mentions of persons in Jeremiah. This is the people who Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive in the seventh year, 3,000 Jews. Remember the word Jews. And 3 and 20. In the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem 832 persons. There we see our word persons. Who's it a reference to? Jews. In the 3 and 20th year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the Jews 740 and 5 persons. All the persons were 4,600. I'm sorry, there's three word persons in there. So I have to change that to five times person is used in Jeremiah. But what are persons referred to? The Jews. A Jew is someone who has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Like I said, we're going through this study so far, not one time is person just a reference to the soul. A, ref a person is just a reference to the spirit. Or a person is a reference to a personality. No. Okay, when you say a respecter of persons, it's saying you're not going to show favoritism to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. Don't be fooled. Stop. Get that out of your vocabulary. If you truly believe in the Godhead, God the Father is the soul, Jesus is the body, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit, and these three are one, one person. Stop saying God in three persons. Get that out of your vocabulary. It's just the person, God and the person of Jesus Christ. That's truth. Okay. So, that's it for our person word study for this study. Uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah. See you in the next word study.